Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowen of Bowen Small Engine and I'm continuing off of my previous video showing you guys actual tools that you can use or actually a tool set made by Emac that you can purchase that will really aid and help you in pressure testing your chainsaws and weed eaters. I cannot stress that you need to pressure test your chainsaws and weed eaters. Okay? Uh, so many times you'll take them to a shop, first thing they'll do they'll tell you you need a carburetor kit or they'll sell you a carburetor and a lot of times that is not what you need at all you just need to find out where your problem areas are and address them 90% uh, of people will blame a, a chainsaw that runs off with itself on on the carburetor and don't get me wrong it, it can but I will tell you that uh, I've seen more often than not where well, you got a pressure leak and you know you just need to go in there and use a, a good pressure tester just like this I'd also recommend you get a vacuum tester and I will show you that there there is a kit out there that you can buy they're, they're relatively cheap you can get them from Amazon and they they actually do both uh, pressure and vacuum and I would tell you that if you're going to do a chainsaw or a weed eater you want to run both a pressure test and a vacuum test on your crankcases uh, on your Carburetors, of course, just use a pressure test. Uh, I don't think you need to use a vacuum, even though I've seen some people do that. I, I think that's ridiculous. Um, I don't see that it's necessary to run a vacuum on one, but if you feel that it's imperative in some ways, you can get by with it. And I say go for it. But for me personally, the pressure test works just fine on the carburetor. Power built built this particular vacuum pressure pump. They're very handy. I'm gonna open it up here. Give you guys a little show. It's built highly similar to a steel pressure and vacuum pump. Very, very handy little tool. Just as you can see, when you pull it. And that'll give you the vacuum. It comes with little canisters too, which really make it nice and convenient if you're wanting to pull liquid out of a chainsaw. These are the specialty tools that I was wanting to show you in the previous video but was running out of time. This is for your carburetors. This is a Walbro tool kit, 500-500 for diaphragm carburetors. If you get this kit, it'll explain everything about your check valve removal tools, um, your, your drivers, uh, for your installation, uh, your picks, okay, which actually remove your welch plugs. I'll give you an idea about what each of these do. You can see these particular tools are actually used to you know, set, you to set your check valves. This tool here is actually used to remove the welch plugs. This tool here is actually used to install the welch plugs, the new ones that you'll have in your carburetor kits. Zama makes a, uh, a tool for leveling your your hinge pin, or I'm sorry, your your tabs. And so does Walbro. I would highly recommend you get these tools. They are necessary if you're going to work on small engines. Uh, the, meet, the metering diaphragm tab, you know, it, it has to be adjusted properly. You need these tools. I neglected to show this earlier. This tool 
is used in place of your spark plug if you want to put pressure in from the top okay of the cylinder which can be a big convenience uh, this tool right here is the way to go you can get it on ebay uh, i think you typically see these under steel chainsaws for pressure testing uh, steel and husqvarna The next tools I'm about to show you are absolutely essential if you're going to do small engine uh, rebuilds such as wheels and chainsaws you need what I'm about to show you don't be fooled there are cheaper alternatives but rest assured they're not going to be to the quality of what I'm about to show you you desperately need to get this if you're going to work on wheels and chainsaws You want a good quality gasoline test kit. They're just cotton swabs. On the back, you'll see there's uh, little symbols to tell you whether it's fresh and gradually going bad. This really comes in handy if you got an adamant customer that thinks that you know gasoline should last for 10 years. Um, you would not believe how many crazy people are in this world that think that you know gasoline doesn't really have an expiration date and assure you it does okay but these are very very handy tools to show people and prove to people that their gas is potentially bad um, more often than not you'll get someone that thinks that you know everything's great and that a chainsaw should start every single time even though they let it sit over winter and never even cranked it you know a carburetor will be gummed up or worse than you know eat up just due to the fact of the uh, alcohol and ethanol in the gasoline. I explained earlier that there's a pop-off tool. This pop-off tool can be used towards your weed eaters, chainsaws, and lawnmowers. And highly recommend this. This is a very, very handy little tool. I use it quite a bit. You can actually see this one here. It's a little relief valve on the bottom. See, release the pressure, you can pump it up, go back down. It's basically the same as that bigger one I was showing you, just a little more convenient to hold on to. The next thing I'd tell you you need is a good tachometer. Trust me, guys you need a good tachometer. This is the Echo. It is excellent. A very nice tachometer. Last but not neat, least, you need a good ignition checker. Trust me, these old ignition testers that you got a hold of, yes, they'll work on a few of your brigs. They'll give you an idea as to whether you got a decent spark. If you want to know undoubtedly whether you have a good spark, you need this ignition tester. Echo makes it as well. It's pretty simple. Basically all you do is you Plug your water coming in off of your chainsaw or your weed eater here. Or here. Hook it up. Just like this. And ground the other end to the cylinder or put it on the spark plug. You can actually see the spark. I really like that. You can see whether it's blue purple, you know, there's various colors, but you can actually adjust and find out whether that coil is doing what it's supposed to, okay? Uh, whether it's potentially weak or, or bad, uh, it's pretty obvious when you, when you use this tool. Um, 
there are specifications in the book for various uh, weed eaters and chainsaws about that gap that's in the middle there. Um, typically, I think it's a little over 400,000. But, as I say, every one of them have a different range. So you might want to look into that and look in the book before you, you know, conclude that you have a good coil. This is a very, very handy spark tester. And as I said, I would recommend it highly. At this point, I've pretty well covered all the tools that you would need to uh, have a successful rebuild on a chainsaw or weed eater. As I said, there are alternatives out there, cheaper alternatives, but if you're serious about doing the work and you want to do it right, and you want to have the success that I've had at doing it, get these tools. I promise you, yes, it's a little bit of an investment, but the chainsaws and weed eaters will hold up. You'll have a happier customer base. And as we all know, if your customers are happy, they're going to be repeat customers. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and end the video at this point. If there's any questions about the tools that I've showed you, please leave me a comment. I'd be more than happy to get back in touch with you.